Hello, my name is Yejun Hong. I'm a medical student in the University of Calgary, and our team is here to explain uh, incontinentia pigmenti. The eye and the skin are closely linked since an embryological uh, point in the human life. The corneal epithelium and the skin are both uh, derived from the same layer um, of the embryological uh, tissues called the ectoderm. The skin lesions on the eyelids and the periorbital areas can develop uh, specific diseases that also eventually affect vision. The dermatological indicators of systemic diseases can present around the eyes as well. There are also skin diseases with ocular manifestations, and lastly, eye diseases with skin-related complications. One of those diseases that link dermatology and ophthalmology is incontinentia pigmenti. This is a genetic disorder caused by the mutations in IKBKG gene in chromosome X on the ARMQ28. This gene codes for the NEMO protein. Uh, this protein is a modulator of NF-kappa-B uh, and serves to activate uh, the inflammation and immune processes as well as cell survival. So the mutation in producing this protein causes characteristic ocular, uh, nervous, and dermatological, as well as dental abnormalities. So here is the anatomy of both the vitreous and the retina. Vitreous is the part of the eye that fills the, um, the most of the internal volume, as you can see in the left picture there. And the retina is where the light converges and there are a lot of photoreceptors and layers uh, of ganglion cells that eventually uh, help translate these uh, light signals to electrical signals for perception of sight in the brain. So one of the function of a NEMO protein other than modulating NF-kappa-B is protection against TNA alpha induced apoptosis of the healthy body cells. So, the mutation in IKBKG, which encodes for the NEMO protein, results in an uncontrolled apoptosis of the cells. Uh, the consequence from that is the weakening of the general skin tissues, formation of follicles, and in the retinal layers um, as well. The risk factors of incontinentia pigmenti is the family history. So this has a pattern of transmission of the X-linked dominant inheritance. It is generally passed from mother to daughter. Uh, if this gene is passed to a son, it will be lethal because the male would only have one copy of this gene in the X chromosome. We use the Landy and Donay diagnostic criteria when diagnosing incontinentia pigmenti. The major criteria is composed of neonatal vesicular rash, um, which can be erythema, uh, vesicles, and on lab results, eosinophilia. You would also see a pattern of hyperpigmentation along the lines of Blaschko at the, the trunk as well as linear atropic alopecic lesions. The minor criteria includes the dental abnormalities, alopecia, woolly hair, and nail abnormalities, as well as retinal disorders in the eye. As discussed earlier, incontinentia pigmenti exerts its effects mainly on the nervous system, ocular, uh, dermatologic, and dental. So, uh, categorizing the symptoms and signs in these four categories. The symptoms and signs of this disease include the skin rash, skin discoloration, pitted nails, and balding. In the eyes, peripheral retinal neovascularization, hemorrhage in the vitreous, 
as well as tractional retinal detachment, the effect exerted by the vitreous. In the central nervous system, there may be developmental delays and other neurologic problems. In the teeth, hypodontia is the main uh, issue. The differential diagnosis for incontinentia pigmenti include herpes simplex virus infection, neonatal varicella, staphylococcal infection, X-linked reticulate pigmentary disorder, pigmentary mosaicism, and Nigelli syndrome. So when seeing a patient with ophthalmologic, dermatologic, neurologic, and dental um, presentations, uh, do, uh, do take a family history of such problems, uh, take history of pregnancy and infectious history, and past molecular testing for genetics, uh, do cranial nerve tests and reflex assessments for the neural system, do a cell lab exam, paying attention to the lids, iris pupils, and last but definitely not least, perform a fundus exam looking for vitreous hemorrhages, neovascularization, as well as retinal detachments. Further investigations for uh, this disease include the skin biopsy, molecular testing uh, for the NEMO, IKBKG gene, if it hasn't been done before, and the fluorescein angiogram. Uh, seeing a peripheral non-perfusion would be one sign that incontinentia pigmenti may be exerting its effects. Treatment of incontinentia pigmenti includes scatter laser photocoagulation on the ischemic retina to prevent the progression of uh, retinal neovascularization. Vitrectomy is also considered for uh, any tractional retinal detachment, uh, so that would be eliminating the root of the problem. And if there is non-clear and vitreous hemorrhage that's obstructing the path of the light, uh, in that case, we would opt for the vitrectomy as well. Prognosis of incontinentia pigmenti is excellent. So if, if there is no significant uh, eye or nerve involvement, the individuals get to uh, live a full normal uh, range of life. For females, there is a risk of pregnancy loss, however. So this is a table of everything we talked about today. And this is the reference. Thank you for watching this video.